couple weeks back, I was on Stephen Glicker's show, Roll for Combat, and if you've never seen it, it's a, a high-profile interview show featuring some of the, the biggest personalities in the industry, including Ryan Dancy, author of the OGL, and, and others, and when he can't get a guest of that caliber, sometimes I go on. And we talked about the actual sales figures of D&D. That's right, Stephen got a hold of them. Stephen is also an author, and the database for the distributor he's using contains the D&D sales information. And the results were shocking, both much higher and lower than you probably imagine. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And even if you're not interested in mainstream D&D, if you just want to be a designer, an independent designer of games, you need to watch this video today on Dungeon Craft. Deathbringer here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about independent and homebrew D&D. Today we're going to be looking at actual sales data provided by my friend Stephen Glicker at Roll for Combat. But before we get into that, Stephen has a Kickstarter. Battle Zoo Indigo Isles is designed to work with Pathfinder 2 or 5e, so you can quickly drop these islands into your own campaign or use them in conjunction with the Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure path. Packed with hundreds of useful features, this book gives you new character options, new monsters, dragons, new regions to explore, detailed towns, two new religions, magic items, familiars, player options, maps, and more. In addition, if you pledge, you can help build the Indigo Isles because all backers get to submit an island idea. And you can check that out at the link below. And while I have your attention, I have a promo of my own. Every time I do a video like this, someone in the comments says, I used to like Professor Dungeon Master's videos with the miniatures, the models, but now all he does is watsy clickbait. Well, I have news for you. Next week, we're going to return to my classic Caves of Carnage with a new episode called The Absolutely True Story of Trader Joe. And I reshot some old footage and shot some new stuff. We also have the Lost City coming up, as well as several crafting videos, like where I show you how to slap chop these orcs and how to create a Roman gladiator UDT. So don't just tune in for the clickbait stuff. Tune in every week. The data I'm about to show you are sales figures for big box stores. That means Target, Walmart, and all your booksellers like Barnes & Noble, like all the big chains. It doesn't count independent game stores or Amazon sales. And you might have to squint a little bit because I photographed this from an Excel spreadsheet and I didn't want to chop it up just to fit it on the screen. The data tells a story and the story is D&D probably sells more and paradoxically less than you think. So this data goes all the way back, showing you the total sales of D&D products all the way back in 2015 when 5e first hit the market. So what do you think the best selling D&D product is? If you said Player's Handbook, you'd be right. And how many Player's Handbooks do you think got sold since 2015? Do I hear 10 million? 6 million? 5 million? The truth is the Player's Handbook has sold 1.5 million copies in retail stores since 2015. The DMG sold 800,000 and the Monster Manual sold 750,000. Again, this doesn't count game stores or Amazon, so we could conservatively double these numbers and extrapolate upon them. I would say the total number of Player's Handbooks Printed and in circulation is something like 3 million, maybe 4 million, no way it could be more than 5 million. The starter set sold 1 million copies, and the essential set about 550,000 copies. Thar's Guide sold 520,000 copies, Tasha's Guide 347,000 copies, Volo's Guide to Monsters 340,000 copies. And this tells me anything with additional rules, subclasses, spells, or monsters sells. Another big seller is the DM screen. 212,000 copies sold and it's just a piece of cardboard with charts printed on it. Now for the adventures themselves, Dragon Heist, 120,000. Horde of the Dragon Queen, Tyranny of Dragons, that's a long title, 110,000. Curse of Strahd, 147,000. And this tells me dragons and vampires sell. And if you want to have a best-selling product, you should have on the cover a vampire riding the dragon and call it Curse of the Dragon Vampires. Spelljammer sold 84,000. Icewind Dale 
83,000, Tomb of Annihilation, 81,000. And this combined with Strahd tells me that legacy IPs sell more. In other words, any of these IPs that were around in the late 80s, early 90s, like Strahd or Spelljammer, will sell because they have a nostalgic factor which will court older players and get them to purchase it as well as the younger players. Spelljammer is interesting because it sold 84,000 and half those numbers were in the first four weeks of release. That tells me reviews can actually have a big impact on how these items sell. I didn't review Spelljammer because Spelljammer has never been my thing, but some of my colleagues like Guy on how to be a great GM did and the results were less than enthusiastic. And it wasn't just Guy, it was a number of other people who complained about Spelljammer not having like spaceship combat when it's a spaceship game. So yeah, reviews definitely impact the final sales of a product. Going down the line, Candlekeep Mysteries, 77,000, Strixhaven, 62,000, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, 52,000, Dragonlands, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, 30,000, Journey Through the Radiant Citadel, 25,000. I could make a joke about how recent D&D releases are being outsold by Dungeons and Dragons Mad Libs and the D&D vs. Rick and Morty adventure set. Of course, products that have been out longer will have sold more copies, but if you look at the first four weeks of sales, Candlekeep Mysteries racked up 29,000, Strixhaven 31, Witchlight 26, Dragon Queen 19, Radiant Citadel 11. D&D Adventures with Rick and Morty, 19,000 in the first four weeks. So the sales pace of recent releases has been slowing down. And yet, sales of core books remain robust. But if we were to graph it out, it would look like it's going downward. Each new release has lower and lower numbers. Now, why that is, I can only conjecture. It might be because of the OGL scandal and those, those whales, that core group of of collectors who always buy everything, they are angry or they're no longer collecting everything. Or it may just be a lack of enthusiasm about those settings or products. But the Dungeons and Dragons cookbook sold 200,000 copies. Put a pin in that. We're going to return to that. Now, how does that compare to other games in the field? Well, Wizards of the Coast did about a billion dollars in revenue in 2022. And I estimate about 300 million of that was Dungeons and Dragons. Now I don't have the stats on Pathfinder, but I've read at some point they do about 26 to 28 million dollars worth of revenue. That means Pathfinder does one tenth the revenue of Dungeons and Dragons. Like if you've ever wondered how much of the market share Pathfinder has, yeah, it's about a tenth. And it's not that Pathfinder is getting smaller, actually. Their sales are way up. It's just D&D is pulling away from them. Tales of the Valiant by Cobalt Press. I love those Cobalts. And on Kickstarter, 10,000 people backed Tales of the Valiant and raised over a million dollars. And you figure that's about 10,000 books. And it might end up be more because they're going to sell it with retail. But if they ended up selling 20,000 copies of that game, it is one-tenth of the D&D cookbook. Shadow Dark was a huge Cinderella story this year. 13,000 people raised 1.3 million. This was a story that was written up in, in Fortune or Forbes, some magazine for rich people I don't read. But the point is that it got serious media coverage and, and it was a huge success. But you got to figure out of that 1.3 million, again, d and is raising 300 million. Shadow Dark is like, one three hundredth the size of D&D. And make no mistake about it, these are great success stories, but it gives you some sense of how big D&D is compared to the rest of this industry. When Wizards of the Coast says the brand is under monetized, this is why. Over the past 10 years, D&D has, by my estimations, sold about three to four million copies of the player's handbook. But over the past two months, Diablo 4 has sold 10 million copies. And now you can see why all these former Microsoft executives think the D&D brand is under monetized because Dungeons and Dragons has more name recognition than Diablo, yet its sales are a fraction of Diablo sales. You can see why these executives are salivating at the thought of a D&D VTT. Make no mistake, they are planning to transition D&D from a TTRPG 
to a VT RPG with a walled garden and monthly subscription fees. And if you pay the fee, you're gonna get access to unlimited rules. You can store all your characters in their cloud and keep your DMs notes there. But if you fail to pay the fee, you're gonna lose your favorite character, which will create stickiness. And that is how they're going to create an entirely new revenue stream and potentially transform the Dungeons & Dragons experience to a mostly virtual tabletop one. This is why I want to support independent games on this channel. There are tons of channels that deal with playing 5e and building the ultimate half tabaxi, half Asimar, dual wielding paladin rogue. This channel is really about doing your own kind of homebrew games and spotlighting independent creators who don't have millions of dollars with which to advertise their games. When you buy an independent game like Shadow Dark or Easy D6 or Black Sword Hack, you're not just buying a game, you're, you're buying love. Okay, that didn't come out right. When you buy a game like Easy D6, Black Sword Hack, or Shadow Dark, you're buying a game handcrafted with love. And that's what I want to support in this space. And if that's what you want to see more of, please like, comment on, and share this video. Also below, you'll find links to my own game, Deathbringer, and you can get extra content on my Patreon. And as always, may all your rolls be 20. So Deathbringer, do you have Heroes Feast, the D&D cookbook? No, they rejected my recipe. For what? Rotisserie Aracocra and turtle soup. Oh god. For more hot tips, click on these videos for more dungeon craft.